Hello and welcome to Options in Plain English. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about two of the most important option strategies for premium sellers, the straddle and the iron butterfly. A straddle is a very simple strategy, combining a short put with a short call, often at the money. This strategy benefits when the underlying trades inside a range and also when the underlying's implied volatility decreases after the straddle has been initiated. There is another reason why the straddle, and especially the add the money straddle, is so important for option traders. It represents the maximum value of extrinsic for both calls and puts being at the money with no intrinsic value at all. Because of this, the add the money straddle represents the market consensus for the expected move of an underlying up until expiration. It's a number that can be used as a type of standard deviation of price and has a number of special properties that make it not only an interesting option strategy, but also a tool to gauge the distribution of an underlying's options across different strike prices. The Iron Butterfly is the defined risk counterpart to the straddle, and it's a strategy used a lot by traders, especially premium sellers looking for IV contraction and little to no movement of the underlying's price. It is one of the most often used strategies to take advantage of IV contraction after an earnings release while not being exposed to the undefined risk of a straddle. When we talk about selling a put and selling a call simultaneously for the same strike price, same expiration, same underlying, and the, and the same number of contracts, we're talking about selling a straddle. A straddle is a strategy that's made up of one short at the money put at strike price K, and one at the money call short at strike price K as well. Now the straddle doesn't need to be at the money, it could be anywhere, but for the most part, when traders initiate a straddle, for the most part they uh, try to make it at the money. Sometimes that strike price is not trading because the price is probably in between, but the intent is to sell the at the money straddle. It could be um, it could be placed anywhere in terms of strike price, but for the most part, this is the desired uh, strike price. So you're selling a put, selling a call, you get a credit, and the max profit for this strategy is the premium of the put plus the premium of the call. Okay, P plus C. It's at the money. This is the expiration PL line. And the dash line represents any time prior to it. So you, you start out with a, a line like this, which is this curve, that as time passes, it starts going higher and higher until at expiration, it uh, merges with the actual expiration PL line. The max loss for this strategy is undefined because you're exposed on the upside to a uh, short call and on the downside you're exposed to a short put that is um, that has all the risk of losses going all the way to zero so those are substantial losses but on the upside it's completely unlimited the break-evens are the first one is you take the um, the uh, strike price where the um, straddle was sold and you add the credit that you received and that's going to be your break even to the downside and to the upside as well so is the strike price minus the max profit and the second break even is going to be the strike price plus the max profit when you initiate a uh, straddle and you do it right at the money your delta is going to be almost zero so it's going to be very close to a delta neutral strategy so you are uh, not taking a uh, directional uh, component or a directional outlook on your trade basically this strategy is a strategy that's used when you believe that the uh, underlying is not going to move a lot is going to stay inside the range and also when you think that the uh, current value of implied volatility is too high and if you think that it's too high you're gonna get a very big credit because the uh, implied volatility drives the premium for both the puts and the calls if after you initiate the, the, uh, the, the position implied volatility goes down these premiums are going to go down as well and those are gonna be profits for you 
as time passes, also theta is going to start eroding the value of the put and the value of the call, and that's going to give you profits as well. So in, with this strategy, what you're banking on, you're banking on the stock not moving a lot and also implied volatility going down. And also, you are indifferent as to whether you want the uh, price to move higher or lower. This is a delta neutral strategy. When the um, price starts moving higher, for example, your position is going to want price to go down. So as it moves higher, your deltas are going to start becoming uh, negative so that the position wants the price to come back to the middle. Same thing when the price starts going down, then your, your deltas are going to be positive, meaning that your position wants the price to go back to where it was. It wants price to go back to the middle. It wants price to go higher. But initially, you don't have a delta component. You don't have a directional component. Now, if you do the same thing, but with spreads instead of naked options, you would have a strategy called an arm butterfly. So an arm butterfly is made up of the same thing as a straddle, short one at the money put at K, short one at the money call at K, but in this case, we're buying a put that's lower in strike price, and we're buying a call that's higher in strike price to limit our losses on the downside and on the upside. So it's a risk-defined version of a straddle. Okay, so short one at short one at the money put at K, short one at the money call at K, long one out of the money put at KP, long one out of the money call at KC. The maximum profit is going to be the uh, P, the premium of the put that you sold minus the premium that you bought, plus the call that you sold minus the call that you had to buy to uh, limit your losses on the upside. So P minus PL plus C minus CL. The break-evens are going to be something similar to the ones for the straddle. You take the strike price where the put and the call, where the shorts are, and then you uh, subtract the uh, max profit to get to the break-even, number one. There is one break-even on the downside. And then for the break-even on the upside, you take the strike price and you add the uh, profit, the max profit, so the credit that you received when you initiated the position. The max loss is going to be the greater of this strike minus K minus the max profit, so the, the, the initial credit received, or K minus KP minus the max profit, so the initial credit that you received when you put on the position. Here, I'm assuming, so visually, if you look at this, um, at this, at this uh, risk profile, it looks very symmetrical, but it doesn't have to be. And in fact, if you initiate your positions based on delta, oftentimes it's not going to be symmetrical because deltas are not symmetrical on the upside and on the downside for calls and for puts that are out of the money. So in this case, visually, it looks symmetrical, but it doesn't have to be. That's why the max loss is going to be the wider of this one minus this one, KC minus K, or K minus KP. And after getting the, the width of that particular spread, of that particular side, you have to subtract the credit that you received, and that's going to be your max loss. In any case, the max loss is limited, unlike the max loss on the uh, straddle, which is unlimited or undefined. This strategy, pretty much like the uh, straddle, is um, relying on the fact that you think that the price is going to stay inside the range, this range between the break-evens, and also, it's also relying on the fact that you think that the implied volatility was high to begin with and is going to start going down after you put it on. So it's, um, in a way, short implied volatility and is short, so it's betting on there not being a lot of move, a lot of price movement for the underlying. 
same as the straddle if it starts moving higher your position is going to want the price to come back so it's going to start gaining some negative deltas same if it starts going down your position is going to turn positive delta but initially it's very close to a delta neutral position it might have a very little component a very small just because of how the strike prices are and how the delta is calculated maybe you're going to have a very a, a very minute a very small minuscule uh, amount of delta but in reality you this is considered a um, a delta neutral position especially if you put it on uh, considering that taking that into account and you go by deltas and not by making this symmetrical so you don't go um, I'm gonna put my short uh, options here and then twenty dollars up and twenty dollars down I'm going to put the, the wings these are called the wings um, you don't do that what you do is you look at for example the uh, I'm gonna sell the uh, 50 Delta because it's the other money but I'm gonna be but I'm, I'm gonna be buying the wings at uh, 10 Delta 10 Delta for this one 10 Delta for this one so the distance between this and this might not be the same as the distance between this one and this one if you base it on Delta if you make your iron butterfly based on deltas instead of just based on distance these these types of positions are going to be uh, called a dynamic or dynamic iron butterflies whereas the other ones would be static that's that's what people refer to as a, a static butterfly just considering the distance between k and kp and k and kc if you consider deltas those are going to be dynamic because it depends on the deltas that those uh, wings are going to have and because of that it might not be symmetrical Now we're going to look at an example for a straddle and we're going to be looking at the strike prices and we're going to be looking at premiums as well. So if we have an underlying that's trading at $100, you have the strike price at 100, you can sell a put and sell a call here and the premiums are 650 for the put and 650 for the call, you're going to be collecting $13 and this is what you're going to have. You just sell the put, sell the call, that's called the uh, $100 straddle for thirteen dollars so this is the position that you have if you tell a trader of, of the uh of the uh, hundred hundred dollar straddle on for thirteen dollars they're going to understand exactly what you mean there is nothing else for you to specify because a straddle is just selling a put and selling a call at the same strike price the first break even is going to be the strike price minus the credit that you received so 100 minus 13 is going to be 87 this is going to be the, the first break even and the second break even is going to be $113. So as long as at expiration the stock price is between 87 and 113, you are going to start you're going to be making money at expiration. Prior to expiration, you have to consider the actual T plus one line. Okay, so any any um any profits prior to expiration is going to are going to be determined by this line which is going to be changing shape as implied volatility changes as time passes etc but basically it's going to start like this and it's going to start uh, approaching the uh, expiration line that you have right here the max profit for this particular strategy is going to be $13 per contract because you're collecting $650 plus $650 the max loss is going to be unlimited because you can start you can start losing money as it starts going down here or going up in price and down in profits and uh, there is no limit so you can lose uh, a lot of money and there is no limit to that amount that you can lose the buying power reduction is going to be the greater buying power reduction for either side so if you sell a put, sell a call, if they have the same BPR, then only one of those BPRs are going to be used because you can't lose on both sides because of this. If, for example, the BPR for the put is for $100, let's say that it's a naked put, it's uh, $1,800. And for the call, it's $2,000. The whole BPR 
for the whole position is going to be two thousand dollars it's not going to be thirty eight hundred dollars it's not going to be the uh the sum of both these um bprs is going to be the greatest of the of of those two the greater of those two so in this case the um the naked the uh, bpr for a naked put and the bpr for the na for a naked call if they're right at the money are going to be very similar so it's going to be only one because of this in most cases having already a short call or a short put and adding the other side does not increase the bpr for the overall position so if you already have a short put and you put a short call on top of that then the bpr is going to be the same and you're going to be receiving more credit because of this, it is considered a capital efficient strategy. Now, this strategy is profitable if the underlying price stays inside a range. Which range? Well, inside the break evens at expiration, right? So, because of this, this is the uh, profitable area uh, shown here in green. So, if you stay inside the range with your price, you're going to make money at expiration. It is also profitable if the implied volatility starts going down after establishing the straddle. So once you sell a straddle, if the if the IV starts going down, those are going to be profits for you because IV going down is something similar to time passing. So these um, these profits here represented by the dash line are going to start going up and up because as IV goes down, this line is going to start approaching the um, is going to this line is going to start getting closer and closer to the solid line representing the uh, PNL at expiration, and until you reach expiration, at which point these two lines are going to be the same, and that's when the uh, this strategy is going to expire. Time decay works in favor of this position. So if nothing happens, if the price stays here and time just starts passing, time decay is going to start working in your favor when you have a short straddle. This is the opposite of what happens if you, set, if you buy the straddle or if you buy a call or buy a put. Every time, um, every time a day passes, you start losing money because of theta, because of time decay. In this case, you are taking that time decay and uh, profiting from it. The max profit is only going to happen if the underlying expires right at the short strike. So if, if it expires inside this range, you're going to make money. But how much money? Max profit. Remember with, um, with, a, with a strangle, we had a range where if the uh, underlying expired inside that range, which was the range that was determined by the uh, short strikes of the put and of the call, uh, in that whole range, you made max profit. In this case, it's only if you pin this strike that you're going to make max profit. So max profit on a straddle is very difficult to get. Why? Because you have to pin the strike, right? So it's only at $100 that you're going to make max profit here. Okay, if it expires at 98, for example, then your call is in the money and you have to either close that position prior to expiration and pay for it or uh, actually let it, um, let it expire and then take assignment. For example, you're going to be selling at this price, buying at this price, which means that you're going to be realizing a loss of $2. So your max profit is going to be the initial credit minus the two dollars that you got here so it's important to notice here that max profit on a straddle is very very difficult to achieve because you have to pin the strike at expiration if you pin it prior to expiration you're not going to get max profit look at the dash line let's say you stay here and uh, it moves and then it goes back and finally you are at the short strike price well you are not at max profit yet. You have to stay there at expiration or get there at expiration. This strategy is directionally flexible. 
if you put it right at the money, it's going to be established as a delta neutral strategy, but then it's going to start moving and it's going to start gaining and losing deltas. So if it starts going higher, if the price of the underlying starts going higher, then you're going to get uh, negative deltas because the position wants the price to come back to the middle. And if it starts going lower, you're going to start getting positive deltas. So that uh, that represents the position wanting the price to go back to the middle. This strategy can be adjusted, rolled and modified in many ways to take advantage of changing market conditions. So let's say, for example, the price starts moving higher and then you decide that uh, your put is going to start losing a lot of value and uh, your call is going to start gaining value. So you're going to start losing money on the call. But on the put, maybe it gets to a very small value. You, what you can do is you can just close this this um, this particular position, the put, the, this, this particular leg. Or you can take this one and move it a little bit higher, creating an inverted type of a strangle and collecting more credit and uh, balancing your deltas. OK, so it's very flexible. It's very easy to adjust. It's one of the advantages of a uh, of a straddle when compared to the undefined version of a straddle, which is a um, an iron fly or an iron butterfly. Now let's talk about an iron butterfly. In this case, remember the difference is the same as a straddle, but with wings. So you have to buy the put here, you have to buy the call here, and then you're going to have an iron butterfly. By buying the call and buying the put that is um, that are out of the money, you're going to be limiting your losses, but you're also going to be hurting your, pro your max profit because now you're going to have to pay for something on top of the uh, credit that you're going to be receiving for selling these two options. Okay, so the, the, the structure here is, again, the straddle in the middle, and then the wings outside, okay, out of the money. So we're going to start looking at an example, at a similar example to what we had with the straddle, so you can see the differences. If an underlying is trading at $100 and you have the strike price at 100 you have a put and a call that you can sell, okay? So you can sell the put for 650 and you can sell the call for 650 now you have to think about the wings and for the wings, let's say I want to put my wings at 120 and at 80. So I'm limiting my losses here on the downside. So anything below 80, I'm not going to lose any more and anything above 120, I'm not going to lose any more. OK, so I'm going to be buying those and let's say that those are trading for 150 each. So the long put is going to be 150. The short put is going to be 650. The short call is going to be 650. And the long call is going to be 150. OK, so let's analyze this position. This position would be called a uh, the 80, 100, 120 iron butterfly for ten dollars. Why? 650 and 650 is 13 minus 150 and 150 is 3, 13 minus 3 is going to be $10, okay? Or if you want to see it this way, 650 minus 150 is going to be 5, plus 650 minus 150 is going to be 5. This is 10 altogether. So the 80, 100, 120 iron butterfly for $10. The first break even is going to be at 90, and the, and the second break even is going to be at 110. Why? Because we're collecting $10. So we have $10 as cushion on the downside and $10 as cushion on the upside. Because of this, the break even one is 90 and the break even two is 110. So 100 minus 10, 100 plus 10. The max profit is going to be $10, the credit, the total credit that we received when we initiated it. The max loss is going to be $10. Remember, in this case, it's not going to be unlimited. OK, it's perfectly limited. OK. The BPR is going to be the greater BPR for either side spread, considering the full credit received. In this case, I'm assuming that this one is symmetrical. As, as I was mentioning before, it doesn't need to be. So if this, for example, if this spread, the uh, short 
put spread that you have here the short call long call if this one is wider then this is going to be the side that's going to be driving the max loss because the max loss is going to be on that side okay since you cannot lose on both sides you're only going to be margined based on the max loss that's the greater that's that's greater between the call spread and the put spread okay but not on the uh, sum of both only on the uh, the greater of the two in most cases having already a short call spread or a short put spread and adding the other side does not increase the bpr for the overall position okay so if you have a a short call spread for example you can you can you can initiate the uh this call spread the 100 120 for five dollars in that case your max profit is five dollars 650 minus 150 and your max loss is going to be fifteen dollars now if you put the uh, short put spread on top of that the uh, max loss is actually not going to be increased in fact it's going to be decreased because now you have an additional credit and the width is the same okay so because of this it is considered a capital efficient strategy okay um another thing that i would like to mention is that when you go to your platform you might see the bpr as being the full width of the of the uh, greater of the two or of the wider of the two spreads but in reality you are given a credit as well for the money that you initially received that money is yours to keep okay so even though in this case it would say that the buying power reduction is going to be uh the uh, 20 dollars times one contract which is 100 shares so it's going to be two thousand dollars even though it's going to say two thousand in reality you also received one thousand to begin with because of the credit that you received so the actual net value of the uh, buying power that you're affected by is going to be just the max loss and again the max loss depends on which side is the widest so the wider of the two this strategy is going to be profitable if the underlying price stays inside a range same as the straddle it's going to be profitable if the iv starts decreasing after establishing the iron butterfly but it's going to start getting money or making money or making or having more profits as the iv starts going down less at a, at a, at a slower rate than the straddle why because you have not only do you have these options that are short okay you have these options that are long so yeah these are going to start benefiting from a from a decrease in uh, implied volatility but these ones are going to be hurt by that so yes you're going to start making more money here than you're going to lose here but you're going to lose here on the wings okay so it's a bit of um a uh, your hedge is going down as well okay so because of this a if you want to benefit by uh, a little bit at a very high rate or at a very fast rate in terms of um, time passing or iv going down then you're better off doing a straddle but in that case you have to put up more money because those are naked options and also the bpr for the straddle is dynamic so if it starts moving against you and initially your bpr was two thousand dollars for example then you might come to a point where instead of two thousand is going to be twenty five hundred or three thousand or four thousand so it's dynamic in this case as long as you keep your wings on at all times your max loss is not going to change your bpr is not going to change that's the difference between a butter an iron butterfly and a straddle same with time decay it works in favor of this position but at a lower or a, at a slower rate than that for the straddle the max profit is only if the underlying expires right at the short strike same like with a straddle you have to pin the short strike right at expiration for you to get max profit which is pretty close to impossible 
and this one is directionally flexible. It could be established as a delta neutral strategy initially. Okay, so if you started right here at the money, the delta for the put is going to be almost the same as the delta for the call, and you look for deltas that are similar on, on the wings as well. So you buy the uh, 10 and you buy the 10 put as well, the 10 delta put, the 10 delta call, these are almost the same, then your whole butterfly is going to be very close to uh, neutral. But if you want to have a directional component, you start playing with the deltas. You can be closer here. You can move it further away. You can move this one closer. You can move this one further away. You can initiate the um, the shorts, the short options, not at the money, but put them somewhere else. In that case, if you move the whole iron butterfly, let's say to the right, and you uh, you put it, you establish it. At a price that's higher than the current price then you're going to have a directional component and that directional component is going to be positive delta because you want this position to pin with uh, with an arm butterfly with a straddle you always want your price to go to your short strikes so in this case uh, if you put it uh, at a higher price then you have a positive delta if you put it at a lower price then you have negative delta. That's how it works for the iron butterfly. And the iron butterfly is less adjustable than a straddle. Why? Because let's say it starts moving against you and you want to you wanna adjust it, you want to modify it. Well, if you want to modify the put side, for example, in the, um, in the straddle, in the case of the straddle, what we thought was, okay, I'm going to take the put and, and close it and uh, that's it. Or I'm going to take it and move it and adjust it and create an inverted strangle, something like that. Well, if you do that, yes, you can do that. But if you do, then your risk is going to start going higher. So you have to take your short and your long and move both, which is going to, number one, create less of a credit that you're going to get for adjusting the butterfly. And number two... You're going to have to, you, you're, now you have a lot of components. So you are uh, t pretty much taking off a spread and then initiating another one, which is going to be four legs altogether. And you have to pay the uh, bid ask spread for both, not to talk about commissions and uh, any other transaction fees that you have to pay. So it's a little bit, um, it, it's more complicated not complicated but it's more it's more uh, it has more friction it's more cumbersome it's less adjustable than a straddle when you put on a straddle you can easily move it anywhere you want and you're going you, you just have to keep track of your credits and and you, you keep track of your debits and at the end of the day you just add them up and you see how much you made over time but this one you have to move the wing or if you if you leave the wing where it is then you're going to start um taking on more risk and now so now, now you have to adjust your capital because now you're gonna have to it's like throwing um you know good money after bad money as they say um because if you originally were using two thousand dollars to put this on or one thousand and then now you widen it out then now you're gonna have to put three thousand dollars so something that's working against you you're gonna put more capital into it so that's not a very efficient way to work so because of this the iron butterfly is less adjustable than a straddle now let's go to the platform and take a look at an example and see if we can um if we can notice the differences between straddles and iron butterflies so now we're going to go to our platform and we're going to take a look at spy spy which is the uh, etf for the s p 500 index i'm going to be using the um the next monthly expiration, which is the June 2020 with 15 days to go. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be selling a straddle and then I'm going to be selling an iron butterfly. So 310, 49, 310, 48 is very close to 310 or 311. So I'm going to be selling the um, three. Um, well, it could be either 310 or 311. Let's go with the 310 because that's where this is heading. 310 36, 310 32. Okay, so I'm going to be selling the 310 put and I'm going to be selling the 310 call as well. And that's our straddle, simple as that. This is a straddle that we're selling, one contract. 
the 310 for $11.02. So if we look here, what we're going to see is that the uh, the the break even is going to be the the uh, 310 minus the credit that you received and on the upside is going to be the 310 plus the credit that you received in this case $1102 maximum loss is infinite and the buying power effect is going to be 6200 why because this is trading at around 310 we said that it's going to be roughly what the um, what the buying power would be for one of the legs and one of the legs would be a put or a call short put or short call and it's about 20 percent of the notional the notional would be 100 shares so 320 or 310 100 shares would be of course 31,000 20 percent of that is around 6200 something like that this is what the uh, buying power effect that we're seeing here is showing us okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to analyze this trade i'm going to send it to the analyze tab okay and i'm going to come back and now i'm going to work on the uh, arm butterfly so i'm going to keep the same short options the same short call and short put and i'm just going to add the wing and what i'm going to do to add the wing is i'm going to look at the um at the uh, delta and what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the 25 delta okay so i'm going to be buying the 25 delta i'm going to be selling the 50 delta pretty much for both i'm going to be buying the 25 delta put which is going to be this one the 299 and i'm going to be buying the 25 delta call which is this one the closest one is the 24 so I'm going to be buying this one. And now I have my, this is going to show on our platform, on TOS, on the Thinkorswim, it's going to show us an iron condor, but it's actually an iron butterfly, okay? So now we have the the short strike is going, to, is this is going to be the same for both. It's going to be 310. And then the long call is going to be 318. And the long put is going to be 299, okay? So we went and we used the uh, delta to buy our wings okay since because we did this now you're going to notice that the width of both spreads are not the same so on the call side we you have an eight dollar wide spread and on the put side you have an eleven dollar wide spread so this is not a symmetrical position the loss is going to be more the loss is going to be uh, greater on the put side because the the wing was so far away and because you, we use delta but in this case we need to do this because we need to take uh, skew into account and i have a whole lesson on skew and iv skew so you want to check it out you're more than welcome to um, because of iv skew you have to go by delta and you're buying the same delta 25 and 24 which is the closest one to the uh, 25 and now you have this iron butterfly that is an, an uh, asymmetrical so it's not symmetrical at all okay if we analyze what we have here now this actually i didn't see this we are uh, putting on an, an iron condor which is an iron butterfly for the 310 318 299 for 688 okay and the max loss is going to be what the 11 dollars that you have on the put not the eight that you have on the call and also not the sum of both is just the greatest of the two or the greater of the two okay so you're gonna have the uh, break even is going to be the the uh, 310 minus 689 so 30311 and the the 310 plus the the 689 so 31689 the max loss is going to be 411 why because it's, it's the 1100 that you have on the put side minus 689 is going to be 411 if it was the call side then it would be 800 minus 689 and it would be um pretty much 111 111 dollars because you're seeing that it's picking up the uh, wider uh, spread and this is what what should happen because that's where the max loss is okay the buying power effect is going to be 411 
okay because that's the max you can lose and that's it so we're going to send this to analyze okay and now we're going to take a look at both positions okay so you have here the actual straddle and what, what i'm going to do is i'm going to fix the y scale so it doesn't change okay I want this to show properly here. Okay, so that's that's going to look better. Okay, so we have the straddle. And initially, when you have the straddle, you're receiving 1105. So this is your max profit. And your max loss is unlimited, of course. Okay, if you see here, you can lose. In here, I'm losing $4,000. And I'm only receiving eleven hundred, and it could it could go. Uh, your loss can can grow infinitely because the uh, it can go uh, arbitrarily to a to an arbitrarily high number, so to infinity. Okay, so this is the straddle max profit eleven oh five max loss is going to be undefined or unlimited, but the um, the actual position is going to be is going to have a certain um, buying power reduction based the one that we saw and it's based on the 20% uh, of the notional value of either of the legs now if you look at an iron condor for this one now look at the difference now you are limiting your losses but you're also decreasing your credit so you're gonna be making less but now you're not gonna be making as much you're not going to be losing as much and you're also going to be making less losing less and this is a defined risk position now if you look at this one one of the things you can notice is that it's not symmetrical this is what we mentioned our max loss is on the uh on the downside okay and it's 412 dollars because it's 1100 minus 688 so this is the 412 dollars on the upside we're actually going to lose only $112. So this can go to $400 or whatever, $500, 1000. It doesn't matter. I'm only going to lose $112. So this is the difference between an iron condor, an iron butterfly in this case, and a straddle. With the straddle, you make more. Your Greeks are higher so your theta and everything and we can take a look here because we have the information okay let's uh move this a little bit so we can see better okay so you have this is the price that we have right now okay so at the current price the straddle has a delta of 69 which is very very little so it's basically delta neutral okay the theta so how much money you're gonna make per day is 35 dollars if we analyze the arm butterfly, remember, same, same strike price for the shorts, but the theta is going to be $7, 689, okay? So with the, with the straddle, with the straddle, you make more and your theta, your time decay is going to be more. You're going to be making $35 every day if the price stays where it is and nothing else changes, okay? With the, with the arm condor, you're, you're comparing 35 to 7 your butterfly your iron butterfly is only going to make seven dollars okay so that's where the difference is okay the uh the greeks for the straddle are much larger than they are for the iron butterfly in a way an iron butterfly is like a like a muted version of the straddle in Greeks, in profits, in losses, everything is smaller, okay? And the actual option properties are somewhat offset because you have longs and shorts. And because of this, you have limited losses, but also less profit. And the Greeks don't act as much as they do for the undefined version, which is the straddle. 
So now you know how to put on a straddle, now you know how to put on a strangle, an iron condor, iron butterfly, now you know how to buy a call spread, buy a put spread, sell a call spread, sell a put spread, now you know how to buy a call, sell a call, sell a put. So now you, you have a lot of options, no pun intended, you have a lot of alternatives where you, how you can use your options to put together a strategy that reflects your market outlook. And with this, you're going to be able to be a better option trader. And I hope that this information, all these lessons are uh, beneficial to your trading and that they make you a better trader. Thank you very much for your attention and goodbye.